Today, I want to talk about the king of soccer, Lionel Messi's trip to China. In order to participate in a friendly football match between Australia and Argentina, he collided with the 70th birthday of China's President Xi Jinping. How did this happen? As we all know, President Xi is a football fan. His football dream is to see China win the World Cup. He may not be able to realize this dream, but someone made sure he could hold a 70th birthday party he would enjoy. Imagine this scene. President Xi is sitting on the stage, his face beaming with a childlike smile. On the pitch, Messi is running from left to right, as if saying, President Xi, this goal is my birthday gift to you. Messi, this is more than just a friendly match, this is a national level birthday party. So Messi was invited to Beijing to celebrate President Xi's birthday, which seemed like a very good idea. However, as with anything in China, it was full of drama. Messi had just landed when he was held at the airport for two hours due to visa issues. What an interesting start, welcome to China, Messi. He had brought a Spanish passport, not an Argentine one, so he couldn't get a visa on arrival, and asked confusedly, doesn't Taiwan count as China? This blew up among netizens on both sides of the strait. They shouted Messi, didn't mean to insult China, but insulted China anyway. This is a funny incident, but I must say, Messi, welcome to, one country, two systems, where anything is possible. Thus, the king of soccer Messi was trapped at the airport, causing great anxiety among his fans. And do you know who organized this match? It was a company called, China Hongqiao International Investment Limited. They once said they were an engineering and petrochemical company. But, the company mainly engages in industrial investment and management, engineering technology consulting, survey and design, project supervision, engineering contracting, warehousing, import and export business, organization of cultural and art exchange activities, hosting conferences and exhibitions, economic information and technical consulting services. In other words, this company is involved in almost all possible business activities. I guess they might even expand into space tourism or exploring the underwater world. Australian Senator Claire Chandler said that this company is a member of the United Front, part of Chinese government diplomatic arm. The company said they didn't know that President Xi's birthday was on that day. Haha, <laughs> I find that funny. President Xi, look, this is your birthday surprise, even you didn't expect it. So, folks, if you want to give President Xi a birthday gift next year, remember to sort out your visa issues first, otherwise, you might be stuck at the airport for a few hours. Also, don't forget, if you want to hold an event in this big country, make sure to check if it's President Xi's birthday. Otherwise, you might accidentally throw a birthday party for President Xi. We all know that President Xi has cleared the way for unlimited term ruling, which means he might have many more years to celebrate his birthday low-key. I'm just wondering, who will they invite next time to celebrate for President Xi? Could it be Martians? Hello everyone, I am your news anchor, Yali. We provide you with a one-stop service for Chinese news broadcasts and talk show performances. Hope you can get your daily Chinese news in laughter and joy. Chair of the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, said at a hearing this week that China is borrowing from international institutions as a developing country and setting debt traps through its Belt and Road Initiative, which is an international scam. The House and Senate recently passed a bill requiring the U.S. government to push for an end to China's status as a developing country in international organizations. America's superbosses are flocking to China. Tim Cook says his Apple shares a symbiotic relationship with China. Elon Musk says the degree of US-China interests is like inseparable twins, Bill Gates received the highest courtesy. Chinese President Xi Jinping met with co-chairman of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Beijing on Friday, June 16, saying that the basis of China-US relations is at the civilian level and he hopes that the friendship between the two peoples will continue. Xi Jinping called him an old friend, and Gates returned the compliment. The day after Bill Gates' visit to China, the Gates Foundation pledged a donation of 50 million US dollars to the Global Drug Development Center located in Beijing. However, the bosses are also preparing a strategy to move out of China if necessary. The former US Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, recently mentioned in an interview with Bloomberg that if Sino-US relations continue to be tense, conflicts between China and Taiwan are very likely to occur. When asked about the possibility of China attacking Taiwan, Kissinger said, According to the current trajectory of, Sino-US, relations, I believe that some military conflicts are possible. Kissinger also reiterated the importance of dialogue for easing tensions, pointing out that the current trajectory of the relationship must be changed. Next week, Indian Prime Minister Modi will make his first state visit to Washington in nine years.
His last visit to China and meeting with Xi Jinping was five years ago, and India is the only country that actually has a conflict with China. Modi's visit comes at a time when the United States and India are strengthening cooperation in key emerging technology areas. An agreement for General Electric to manufacture engines for the Indian military is being pushed forward, and India will also purchase high-altitude armed drones from the United States. The Canada and Taiwan Relationship Framework Act was proposed again, the European Parliament passed a resolution calling for the release of Hong Kong newspaper founder Jimmy Lai and the abolition of the Hong Kong version of the national security law, and the chairman of the U.S. House China Committee criticized Biden's haste to restart U.S.-China dialogue as misjudged and dangerous. A U.S. security company claims that Chinese spies have infiltrated hundreds of public and private networks, and a Cuban town is accused of being a Chinese spy base. Yu Maochen was an important participant in the formulation of U.S. policy towards China. The former chief of staff of Taiwan believes that Beijing's development of aircraft carriers is not aimed at Taiwan but at world domination. Before Blinken visited Beijing, U.S. lawmakers proposed a new bill to help Taiwan resist China, and South African police are currently receiving Chinese police training. On the 16th, immigrants mainly consisting of Chinese people held a rally in Sydney, requesting that their permanent residency status be approved as soon as possible. Australia has shelved its golden visa program, resulting in prolonged visa approval times. The Business Innovation and Investment Program, BIIP, launched in 2012 has attracted many wealthy Chinese immigrants to Australia. However, evaluations show that BIIP visa holders contribute less on average than Australians, and the government will focus on addressing the shortage of key skills in the future. Taiwan People's Party, established only over a decade ago by Ko Wenjia, has surpassed the main opposition party, the Kuomintang, becoming the second most popular political party on the island of Taiwan. China's National Bureau of Statistics recently announced that there are more than 6 million youths aged 16 to 24 in China still looking for work, and stated that according to the statistics adopted by China, working one hour or more per week does not count as unemployed. This information sparked various discussions among the public. Although China bid farewell to its zero-COVID policy half a year ago, the momentum of economic recovery is still weak. Beijing's extreme heat of 39.4 degrees has set a mid-June high temperature record. Analysts point out that the extreme heat arriving earlier than in previous years not only puts China's power supply system to a severe test, but also casts a shadow over the growth prospects of the world's second-largest economy. As China expands internationally, it has gradually cut off its ties with its home country, China. It has moved its headquarters to Singapore and deregistered its original company in Nanjing. Including Shine and TikTok, some of China's most entrepreneurial brands have begun to set up new factories and headquarters overseas, emphasizing connections with foreign countries and distancing themselves from their homeland. But it remains unclear whether this strategy will work. The Chinese government, in rural China, starts blaring loudspeakers without thinking about the welfare of the residents at 7 o'clock every morning for an hour, and in the afternoon for an hour. The same content of quotes of Xi Jinping is constantly looped, even ads are sold, causing farmers to live in noise pollution. This is only for rural areas, at the end of the year, agricultural cooperatives are urged to sell insurance, and there are no holidays all year round. There are no human rights. This has been going on for three years, and there is irrational oppression against the lower classes. That's the news roundup for today. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time, take care.